Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we are going to talk about dailies in Star Trek Online, what that means and what that is in practice. Uh, this is a suggestion, um, question slash suggestion um, that I got from a viewer, Cable2020, uh, where in the last video we were looking at the R&D system and I had made a comment that, you know, progressing through that uh, is or should be, you know, part of your dailies. And uh, the, the question was asked, well, you know, what, what are the dailies? Now, I'm assuming he knows what dailies are in general, but which dailies or, you know, which tasks should be in that list for Star Trek Online? Uh, if you don't are unfamiliar with that term, um, dailies essentially is, um, you know, your, your tasks that you want to do either daily or uh, any time that you can log in. So every time you log in, you know, you want to refine your dilithium, right? And there's quite a few different things um, and different systems in the game that you you should be progressing through every time you log in. So um, sometimes people will kind of slim that back to, you know, a few things because they just want to get in and play and have fun. But doing those things is going to allow you to unlock uh, greater abilities, resources, and gear. And so it's something that you need to progress through. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, you need to do it all and, and cram it all through. And, you know, you, you want the game to be fun. So if it takes you, you know, if you do it really fast, you can get a lot of this stuff up within a, you know, a month. Um, but to me, that might not make the game real fun for that month because a large chunk of your time is going to be grinding through all of that stuff. Uh, so I think it's important to just to play and have fun. Um, but you know, it, 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 that's really up to you how, how you want to go about doing that. So, uh, before we jump into it, I just want to say thank you as always to the community. Uh, if you've, uh, given me thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate that. If you're new to the channel and this information is helpful to you, I certainly would appreciate a subscription from you guys. Uh, that helps us out quite a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I have just logged into uh, the game here on my free-to-play character. And so there's a couple things I do when I first log in. And you you can do these in any order. I just find that it's, it's easier for me to do certain things first. So I know kind of how... Um, I'm going to, you know, plan out uh, what I'm going to be doing, right? So I've logged in and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my rep system. So if we click here or press the U button, it'll bring up our character menu and we're going to click on reputation. You can see I have a few projects that have been, um, ha have been completed and I need to complete them out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one and I'm going to click and run the next one or do the upgrade. So this one looks like I've actually progressed now to tier six. So I am done with this. So that is nice. Um, so I'll go through, complete that out. And I really don't need to run anything else here because there's no other points to progress. Although you can grind out a little bit of dilithium, but I think there's probably better ways to do it. Um, if you have a ton of marks, you can just keep running these projects here and getting the 340 per day. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do that same thing. So I'll Clear it out and start the next project. So every day that I'm logging in, I'm getting the, the daily amount of points in order to progress through these. Now you can see some of these I'm pretty low on, right? So I, on this character, I kind of, this is a secondary character. It's becoming the main on this account. Um, but there were certain things that I wanted up all the way first. And so, you know, just having fun in the game on my main account and then also coming into this account and doing it, my time is somewhat limited. So I had to kind of focus it. Uh, but now I'm starting to fill in those gaps. Um, so the first item is the rep system. You want to go through this and complete all the ones that you can. Now, what I'll do when I'll go through this, you'll notice some of them weren't filled in, right? Some of them are at, at tier six, so I didn't need to do anything else. But for instance, the Dyson uh, rep, um, it didn't have an active project because I didn't have enough marks when I started all of these projects. And so the reason I do this first is because I'm going to look at, okay, if I'm going to run randoms or if I'm going to, if there's an event going, um, this lets me know, okay, well, what marks should I pick when I finish that event run for the day? Or when I do a random TFO, which one should I pick from the box that drops uh, from doing a random? Or if I'm going to run a specific TFO, maybe I want to run one of the Dyson um, TFOs that rewards the Dyson's mark so I can get 
some of those uh, marks so I can continue to run this. So if you do this first, uh, it'll know, it, it'll let you know what, what you need. If you were, you know, played over the weekend or you have a lot of time, you know, where you're able to just play the game all the time, you may just have tons and tons and tons and tons of marks on all of them. And that's really kind of a non-issue at that point. If you don't have these all at six, then obviously at some point, you know, during your daily play or whenever you log in, Go through the rep system. Make sure you get all of these up. There's just amazing gear, personal um, or rep space traits. Um, you can unlock um, vanity shields. You can unlock uh, fleet modules. There's just a ton, a ton of stuff in here that is extremely helpful and that you need um, if um, you, you know you want to be successful in the game, regardless of what you're doing. You know, if you just you don't care about DPS, you just like you know you want to make a science build or you're, you know pulling everybody in across the map you're going to need gear out of this system so progress through this system this is the first thing i hit the next thing i do is i come into my duty officers and i go to the r d section and as you can see i hadn't done it on this one um, the video last week was all about this specific system uh, but what you'll want to do is come in here and run the ones that you want to now you can only run there's a maximum amount and it depends on how many spaces you have unlocked and if you have the enough duty officers the duty officers you can get basically for next to, next to nothing off the exchange that's not a big issue uh, but you can only run up to four so you'll need to kind of focus on you know what it is that you're wanting to do so i'm going to do beams because i want to get that up to level 15 so i can craft omnis um, and i don't actually on my free to play here i don't have a, another lab scientist i think i donated them to the fleet um, so i should run over and pick one up or pick another what three up because i can slot up to three of these um, and you should do the same if you don't have a, enough and progress through this system here so this will unlock personal space traits and more crafting uh, abilities and items that you can craft uh, so definitely go through this system on the daily as well work on the ones that you want to focus on so if you're working on science you want to make sure that you're getting this up to a minimum of 15 that's going to unlock some of the extra gear that you can use and at 15 it'll also unlock a very good um, personal space trait for science again reference the video from um, last week or earlier this week uh, was all about this system when we talk about that a little bit more so once I get done with that, now I'm going to jump in and I'm going to play some stuff. So the first thing I'm looking at is, is there any events running? So that's what I'm going to do first. There is currently an event running um, that I've already done. I just did it a little while ago. I got a 17 hour cooldown. So it's about two and a half hours ago. Um, if this was available and this was the first time I'd logged in today, I would go ahead and run this event here and I would pick the Dyson um, marks so that I had some to run my rep system for that particular school for the day. Um, so events are going to be next. Uh, you're going to get dill out of these and you're going to get your choice of marks out of any of the events. Once I have finished that, I am going to check and see if I have any dilithium that I can refine. I do not. Well, I do, but I've already refined it. So I would click this and I would go ahead and refine the dilithium that I have for the day. You can do this once a day. I think for me, the clock ticks over at 5 o'clock p.m. on that specific standard time. So you have to do the math to figure out where you are. But let's say I missed yesterday, but I was able to log in today at 4 o'clock. I could refine my 8,000. And then an hour later after five, I would be able to refine another 8,000 dilithium, but I would not be able to refine again until the following day after five o'clock. So it is on a hard 24 hour ticker. It's not from when you did it. There is an actual set time that this refreshes. Um, so just uh, bear that in mind if you're trying to kind of max that out or, you know, you realize, you know, you didn't, you didn't have time to play yesterday, but you have just enough time to log in before whatever that cutoff time is for you, you could basically catch up on that um, and not miss out on it. Dilithium is an excellent, excellent resource. It's used all over the game. It can be exchanged for Zen, uh, which is in kind of a bad state right now, but it is still possible. Um, and pretty much any other gear that you're going to need, rep gear, fleet gear, all of that is going to require dilithium. So make sure that you are refining this. If you have multiple characters, um, once I got done, you know, doing my dailies on, on this character and having fun, I would switch over before I log off to some of my other characters and go through and do these same things um, that we've already gone over. At a minimum, I'm jumping over and I'm refining my dilithium. Because um, you can transfer this around. There's a video for how to do that between characters. And so if you have, you know, maybe you completed the last event on another one or, you know, you're, you're playing two characters, make sure you're going on to both and refining both of those. 
Uh, next, I am going to look at what my endeavors for the day are. So, and potentially re-roll them. So it just kind of depends, right? And so what I'll want to do is, if possible, I want to select tasks that are going to get me the marks that I might need for my rep. Um, would also complete one or two, if I was lucky, of these tasks. Um, and also is going to get me more dilithium if I'm able to um, get it in a random, which is a little bit harder if you're trying to pick exactly, you know, what it is that you're doing. Um, but for instance, you know, I have to uh, destroy dreadnoughts. Um, I need to do five of those. Uh, I need to do Terrans on ground. I probably would re-roll this one here. Let's just go ahead and re-roll it and see what happens. Um, you can either just skip these, you know, but... Rerolling, it's not bad. If you're low on dill, then you know, go run a uh, you know assault on uh, Tarak Nor or something like that, and you'll you'll knock these out. I'm a little more picky these days. I just I don't know. You should be doing it. I should be doing it. That's what we're preaching here. So um, let's go ahead and buy one and just see what we re-roll to. This is <laughs> this can work great or it can be a real big bummer. Deal disruptor, damage in space, perfect. Okay, so what I would do is I would go up to, and, and you can run this, these exact same ones on any character you want. It's just you have to complete the whole amount for a particular one on one character. So let's say I ran a space mission with disruptors and I got half of this and I switched over to another character, this would be back at zero. Um, so if I come back to this character, it would still be at half and I could finish it out. So the individual tasks have to be wholly completed by one. I could do half of it on this guy, go over to another character and then start from zero and complete it on that person. But the entirety of a particular one has to be done on one. So in this instance, what I would do is I would, um, say go to, um, there's, there's dreadnoughts in the event, uh, that's currently running. If you run the counterpoint, um, TFO for the event. I would take a disruptor build into that event and I'd make sure at the end I was getting hits on two, you know, two or three, preferably there's three dreadnoughts at the end. And I potentially could get my event done and two of these um, endeavors done all in one go, right? Which then just frees me up to kind of do whatever I want after that. Um, you could go over to the Archer system, get the Tholians very quickly there. But basically what I'm getting at is that if you can combine a bunch of these tasks into one thing, especially if that one thing is fun, like running the, the counterpoint, um, then this, you know, the dailies become less of a grind and become a lot funner to do. Um, so, but definitely, definitely be your endeavors are probably one of the, especially as a newer player starting to come up, focus on these. This is huge, huge, huge. I mean, the perks you get from this, they're account wide. Um, and I mean, if you look at like critical chance in space, 7.5, I don't think there's a console in the game that gives you that much. That's huge for critical chance and it goes higher. I'm not even all the way up critical severity, 26. I think there's one console at from the lobby store at Epic that'll get you close to that, but there's nothing else in the game that are going to give you these kinds of, of perks. Um, so be doing your endeavors. Um, the, the smaller one and the universal give you next to nothing for points. So at a minimum, I'd recommend getting the, uh, the two top ones here done. So these tend tend to, or, or will, require more input so like if this second one here is um uh three dreadnoughts if you if it was a dreadnought one here it'd be like five or six so it's going to be progressively higher or if disruptor damage was down here it would be like 250 it would be less but these two uh top ones are going to be um are going to reward you quite a bit more points you got eight thousand and then three thousand two hundred uh 650 400 that's nothing so I wouldn't feel guilty if you're skipping this or you're skipping these ones. Although the universals tend to be pretty easy, straightforward. And then you also get a Epic box, which can have R and D materials, more to lithium, that kind of thing. So, uh, if you got time and, and, and you know, you like what the tasks are definitely don't do them. I'm not saying don't do these. I'm just saying, if you do have to prioritize your time, always just focus on these two top ones. You will not be missing a ton by not doing the bottom one here. 
Lastly, what I'll do is I will come over to my fleet. I'll look and see if I have any fleet marks and I'll go check out the fleet and look at if there's any projects that I can contribute to. This helps the fleet and it also helps yourself by building up your fleet credit inventory. Um, with your fleet credits, you can purchase fleet gear along with the dilithium. You can see right now I have 202,000 fleet credits, which is quite a bit. Um, and then I have 417 marks. It looks like most on the first. The fleet marks, especially if you have an active fleet, um, the fleet marks categories are going to fill up quick. They're the easiest to get. And you can't use fleet marks for anything other than trading them in for uh, fl fleet credits. Dilithium is probably one of the things your fleet's going to need the most or these duty officers here as well. Um, so that's always helpful to a fleet when you can donate these kinds of resources because everybody has tons of these. So even if I found an open project right now, I have a lot of fleet credits more than I even need at the moment because I'm not looking to buy anything. I could buy a whole set of tactical consoles with what I already have. Um, and I don't want to go and take up, a, you know, something that maybe somebody else in the fleet can use um, with the exception of this bottom one. So this bottom one here is 2000 is what it can take to complete it. Uh, which is really big compared to a lot of the other ones. Say like this one is still pretty big at a thousand. Some of these will be much smaller though at only a couple hundred. Um, so with with those so like this one here is 300, it's real low. With these ones here, these are to build up provisions for your fleet and they take a huge amount, but they don't return as many. In fact, they return half. So it's normally one to 50 ratio on these uh, 2000 mark projects. It's one to 25. So if you do have a bunch you need to dump off, you can dump these off into here. Um, Cause that's not really going to take too much from anybody else. And it helps get these provisions up, which we need in order to purchase these items from the fleet. Um, so make sure you go through there and look at what you have depending on the fleet that you're in some of them require a certain amount of donations before they start to unlock things for you like the fleet stores or holdings or being able to use the bank or being able to purchase fleet ships because your fleets actually supply a currency which is this stuff here on the back end they have to have a supply of this for you to be able to spend dilithium and fleet credits on items most people don't realize that but you might have enough of uh, you know credits and um, dilithium to go and buy say a tactical console but if your fleet itself doesn't have the provisions for it and that's basically a currency on the fleet end then you're not gonna be able to buy that so you need to make sure that you're donating to your fleet regardless so these are being built up as well and there's enough for everybody to go around or when you need something it will be there uh, for you to be able to get uh, you can check and see if you are in a fleet that has um, requirements for the amount of donations. If you come over to the roster and you click on uh, overall holdings contributions, you can see the numbers here of what you have donated to that fleet. All right, um, so that is mainly what I'll do. So after I get done with all of this, if I have extra time, I generally go and run a couple random TFOs uh, because what we've gone over already is not enough to make sure that I have enough marks all the time to fill this stuff in. If I were to run three random TFOs a day or every other day between the marks you get for the specific TFO and the random box that drops every time you launch a TFO through the random system, you will have enough in order to make sure all of these stay up. The daily projects are only 30 marks. Um, so even if you're getting like the lowest, you know, tier box, you're still going to get, you know, more than enough for at least two days, uh, plus whatever the mission is that you ran. So make sure that you are, you know, going and running, if you have the time, extra TFOs, run them as randoms. They give you the most dilithium and the most marks uh, for you to be applying to your rep system or fleet marks. If you can farm those from those same boxes and uh, most of those TFOs as well. So lastly, I just want to take a quick moment to take a look at some honorable mentions, I guess you can call it. Um, and it's not that these are not real important. Um, they're just not real important to me and where I'm at in the game. Um, although they could be very worthwhile to you, especially as a new player and especially, you know, as you're leveling up, there's some great benefits uh, to at least one of these. So the first one is going to be duty officer missions. Um, so if you go into your duty officers and go to the duty officer tab, current map and in personal here, 
there are a list of duty officer missions that you can do. Um, if I were to change to, uh, you know, go beam up to space, I'd have a whole different list for these. If I go into sector space, if you move around from sector to sector, these continually change and there's just an endless amount that you can run. Um, there's whole guides on how to use um, duty officers to farm dilithium that's more prevalent on or is is done on the kdf side i won't get into that uh, but it's great for leveling so if you come into this here and uh, you have the duty officers available here if you just start clicking through these you're going to pick up a little bit of dilithium a little bit of xp experience um, and it really adds up you you can slot quite a few of these um, if you get to the point where you know, I have a couple here that are not available because i don't have the resources I could beam up to space and have a whole new list start clicking through that um, and so there's quite a bit of things that you can grind out of here the duty officer system is really kind of a whole nother subject in it and of itself you can farm rare duty officers and bridge officers and the list goes on uh, but I just wanted to mention that that was something as well um, that you could add into your dailies as well as the Admiralty system the Admiralty system um, has similar kinds of benefits they'll progress you through um, each one of these i don't know if they call them schools or, or what they are um, but you have the federation klingon romulan and ferengi alliance there are premium tasks you can do called tour of duty there's one of 10 right here so there's 10 total if i were to get all of these done then i would end up getting a specialization point and there's other rewards for um, these other different ones here so this one is going to be uh, fleet dilithium um, you can get upgrades on this one and on this one you can get a bonus pool for the dilithium you get this used to be something I did every single day because the Ferengi one and the Klingon one used to actually just give you straight up dilithium unrefined which was awesome and you could grind these out very very quickly um, using the right process uh, but they did change that a while back because I think it was just too OP for getting dilithium and uh, so they changed it so I don't do it as much as I used to but I wanted just to bring attention to these because these uh, can be very valuable and are something that you might want to consider adding into your daily tasks um, all right well I think that covers everything uh, that I wanted to go over um, what I do personally for my dailies I'm sure many of you will have different uh, sets of tasks that you do on a daily either more or less or maybe a different take on what I'm doing and I always appreciate hearing about that and that feedback it helps me um, do better in the game have more fun in the game and I know it helps uh, viewers as well when they're watching the videos and then going through the comments uh, so I appreciate any kind of feedback you guys have uh, lastly make sure again to go check out the discord great community in there lots of help and just good people um, there's also two giveaways going one is the groupies uh, ship giveaway there's four tier six ships in this pack as well as a vanity shield and then there's a separate giveaway for a Aegis space set so definitely jump in there and check that out um, as always thank you very much for watching I appreciate uh, your guys' support if this was helpful to you please consider hitting the sub button ringing the bell thumbs up that is uh, just super awesome when you guys do that um, all right well until next time guys stay safe have a good one and thank you very much for watching